Hello, I hope you're having a good day. I'm going to be doing some modular work. Colin Benders has been streaming pretty much every day in lockdown, and I was listening to some of his stuff yesterday and thought I might try and recreate some. Thought it might be good practice. So I've already got some modules here, I've already been playing around with it, but I've sort of reinitialized most of them, and I'm going to go through and wire it all up and see where we get to. So we've got a sort of a clock and a sequencer up the top. We've got some VCOs and filters and that sort of thing in the middle. And we've got a drum drum setup down the bottom here. Uh, and a that quantizer in the wrong spot. And over here, just some utilities and quantizers and stuff that we're going to use a bit later on. But to begin with, uh, let's just start with some basic sequencing. We'll start with a kick. Seems like a good a place as any. So we'll run our clock over here into Foundry. Um, let's bump the ratio up and change the clock resolution. The length down to there. Actually, let's just start with a small length just to make sure we've got some sounds coming. So uh, we'll take the gate and run it into this kick. There we go, that's four on the floor right there. And now if we go, this is our drum mixer. There, turn that up. And we need to run that over into our master mixer. Turn that up. And we have some sound. Great. Uh, so, instead of just using that standard kick, let's run it through a filter. Uh, or actually, we can use the built-in EQ here and just roll some of the highs off. I would like to, I like that without the tone. I wonder if we can run it through another filter maybe. See if it sounds any different. I think it's fine. I'm surprised it's still tweaking that much though. Okay, so that's not running fast enough now, so... Let's actually do 16. So a cool thing we can do is we can select four, copy, paste, paste, paste. Cool, and then... Uh, now, one uh, trick that I've, I've just been playing around with this boundary sequencer, and one cool thing we can do is, so it's got four tracks, but I'm going to want more tracks than that for all of my bits and pieces, but we can actually overload tracks a little bit, so I'm going to use this same track for a clap as well, and the way I'm going to do it is, I'm going to use this CV2, so there, CV2, run that into a clap. Uh, and 
for now we'll just use that clap as is and I think there we go so the the um technically we should probably drop all these down to zero so we can use the CV2 as kind of a fake fake gate which is pretty cool um, we just need to title these low One of these, that one. There we go. Turn all those down. Cool, so that's track A. Let's now do a base. So we go to track B. Uh, set the length. clap a bit. So for this one, um, got a little, I want to do it like that. And yeah, this is, as I said, it's just totally ripped off Colin Bender's. This is a, me trying to recreate what he was doing. So let's run that through. I think we can we'll use these three here as our base, a little vault pack here. So we'll go CV into V Oct of the oscillator, and then the gate can trigger an envelope. And then uh, the that goes into input. This goes into call and then the CV Um, and then I actually the way I want to do this is I want a second sequence so I want to copy the first sequence so we'll go select custom that copy sequence to paste uh, except now I just want that uh, the length needs to be shorter Yep, cool, that's kind of nice. Um, and now let's get a hi-hat in there. That might be nice. So we'll go to track C for the hi-hat. Uh, we'll, we won't need, we'll just need a uh, length four. Yeah, because it it's going to be pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so this gate can go to the hats. Hat, 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 hat. Uh, and then, oops, that can go into our drum mixer there. Cool. And then to make it sound a bit less robotic, we're going to use the CV2 input to basically give an accent on the first one. And then, so like that, and then we'll plug the CV2 into the CV. Now it sounds a little bit less robotic. Compare that to. Cool. 
cool. Let's speed it up a little bit, actually. Uh, alrighty, so that's that. Uh, let's start putting some melodics in. First thing is I want to start with just a really subtle drone. Uh, we'll put that... Why didn't that... Oh, I pulled the wrong. Uh, we'll get the saw out. I'm just going to have to go into filter. Uh, I don't need much there, it's just to add a bit of, bit of layering. Um, I didn't reinitialize this cloud generator, but this is with a little bit of a spread. I'll turn up something here. So you don't want too much. Uh, okay, I still seem to be doing much. Oops, I think that's fine. Slot down a little bit. Be wobbly. Take out some of the top. Ooh. Didn't mean that. Yeah, that'll do for now. And now one annoying thing is I haven't hooked this up to an envelope, so it just keeps going even when I stop. So one technique I figured out, which I quite like, is to make a fade out whenever I stop the uh, whenever I stop the clock. So I'm going to connect the run here to a uh, switch, and this switch is going to have its high set to 10 volts and its low set to 0 volts, and then the output we're going to put through a slew limiter in. Uh, and then, so I'll scope this so you can see what we're actually doing. Uh, scope. So now, yeah, whenever we, uh, so when we turn it on, it uh, goes to full, and then when we turn it off, we get a slow fade out. And that's based on uh, these knobs here. So then we can use that output to go into the CV of two VCAs, and now oh, no, it's, it's inverted now actually. So that's off, and then we turn it on, and then off, and it fades out. So that's a cute trick I figured out that is kind of useful. So, um, all right. So now let's get a little bit of a melody going. So we'll put this on track D, track D. Um, and I'll just hook it up to a simple uh, VCO to start with so we can hear it. So let's use, uh, let's use this one, I guess. The Oct, and then the gate can go into our envelope there. Um, this is of a VCA, cool, here's the bottom one, out, and then we need a filter there, and then we'll just go with that like that for now. Um, and of course we're not getting anything, probably for good reasons. Um, oh, well, that's a bit much. Let me just turn that down. Great. So now let's program it. Uh, so we want to tie it to the last one and not trigger a new gate. So this will keep the V-Oct at the same, but won't trigger a new note. So this will. 
that didn't do what I wanted for some reason. That's what I want though. Tiny gate, tiny gate. Oh, I know. Um, you can actually change the default behavior here. If you untick all hold tied notes, um, then when you tie something, it'll do what you want. Um, yeah, see, it unticks gate for you. Okay, so that's too fast. So a cool thing is we can actually do different tracks. We can have different uh, clock resolution, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now we want to select that whole thing, copy it. Sequence two, paste it, change the length, and now just change the notes. There we go, that, that last one feels like it's not very triggering properly, but that's fine for now. Uh, now, one thing I want to do with this, I just discovered this module called a wormholeizer, and I don't really know what it does, but... So, that's with nothing. It just, like, puts it through a whole heap of spacey stuff, uh, which is what I want for now, so... Uh, that's why this reset up. So we've got a global reset. Global reset, but we're on. Cool. Uh, and I'm, I am going to use those different sequences. Um, uh, actually, let's do that now. So a cool thing you can do with Foundry is you can put it into song mode. And each track can have um, different phrases and sequences. So for instance, for track, uh, I think track B is our, yeah, so track B um, is where we had the, um, the first one has the, the G to start, the starts on G and goes down. And our second sequence is just the constant C the bottom there. So in song mode for track B we want it to start on that first one and then we want to go to phrase two. That could be sequence number two. We want to end there. We want to repeat it three times. Um, and now if we uh, we don't get anything. Why am I not getting anything? I have broken it. Oh, look, they've... There we go. So now, in sequence two, sequence one, sequence two, and we get three repetitions of that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then track D, which is our melody, let's make it do, uh, yeah, phrase two. Uh, so actually, sorry, let's make it repeat phrase one twice. Sorry, repeat sequence. Yeah, I'm confused. Phrase one, sequence one, we want to... Ah, need to un... If this is attached, you can't change anything. It's just for following. So repetitions two, phrase number two, uh, we want sequence number two, and we're just gonna have that once. And then phrase number three, which is gonna be our ending one, it'll be sequence number three, and we're gonna have that once. 
Uh, and sequence number three we haven't done yet, so we're there. Sequence three. I think it's three. I just want to clear uh, everything. Um, and I don't really know a quick way to do that, but we could go here, select, copy, three, paste, and then just delete these ones. Yeah, so now, if we do, Oops, okay, I had it wrong. So it goes up. Goes up. Goes down. And then takes a break. And then starts doing random stuff because we forgot to change the length. Uh, so if we go to sequence, three, length, 16. That's what we want. Uh, and then of course we run that. Yeah, good, we shouldn't get in. That's what we wanted. All right, so that's some sequencing done. Uh, and now I want to add a bit more, uh, I want to add some sparkly bits in. So for this, I'm actually going to use an arpeggiator. So we're done, done with the sequencer. I want to, use, so we're going to use a second clock here, we'll just clock it at 2x for the moment, and we're going to use, I've got a sample and hold and a random module down here, so th there, and then we'll take the output of a random node, uh, we'll grab a scope, so the idea is that we want a new note every clock pulse and that it's doing something uh, and then you can see I don't think we want oh you know we can have a high rate yeah, yeah so we want a high rate here so it actually wanders a bit now we quantize uh, quantize this signal uh, and I've put in CDE and uh, G already just because that's kind of nice giving us some quantization, which is lovely. And let's now make a sound. So that goes into Vioct. The output of that goes into our filter. We need a gate trigger for our envelope. We can do CV maybe. Uh, and we're going through the same wormholeizer that we used for I'll bypass it for now. There we go. So we've got um, two th the range is too high. the pitch up a bit with the offset okay this isn't doing anything is that not doing anything weird um We are, we are getting an envelope. Uh, maybe I will use this VCA instead. Now it's really quiet. Hmm. 
weird. Presumably this is the same. Yeah, is this... Like, it just... I would have expected... Oh, the attack's not fast enough. So it's never getting up to the top. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, that's... So now we can probably do... This. Uh, that's the wrong way. Do some cool stuff changing the clock there. I actually quite like the, the 5x, it's pretty cute. Um, so other cool stuff we can do, uh, we can pan that left and right. So if we run this into the pan CV, So, other things we can mess around with, uh, I want, oh uh, yeah, I was playing around with some, some clap delay, so let's, let's get that going. So this clap, let's run it, uh, input, That's all dry. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, let's play around with this refolder to see if we can get a bit of a nicer sound uh, from We've lost our melody, haven't we? Oh, because... There it is. Oops. Um, let me try this refolder. Uh, let's try putting it on. So... Where is our output here? We've got output. Let's go from there. So that's no folding. That's pretty cool. Let's, I'm going to set up a quick bypass so we can preview it. 
Uh, so that's from the send input. Uh, this output goes from the return. Uh, wait, that's not right, is it? No, the output. So that's with the fold. I'll turn it up a little so we can hear it. That's no folding. That's a bit loud. That panning is actually pretty intense too. Yeah, there we go. I don't really know what that does. Yeah, I kind of like it in there. Like there, it's still got a, just a little bit of its punch. That's pretty cool. Cool. Now let's put it in the song mode. Reset it. Let's just kind of have a bit of a play around with the filters, see what different sounds we can get. So, that's a bit much. This is for the melody. Yeah, okay. Not much going on there. That's pretty cool. It's like much drier. It's like puts a bit of resonance, I mean, uh, uh, reverb on it. I kind of want the kick to come through. Right, there we go. Yeah, the problem is the clap's not punching. So do we have to turn everything else down? Yeah, the clap just doesn't have enough. Doesn't have enough going for it. Oh. Let's do a lot more. Oops. I'll use a 909 clap. That's a bit nicer. I'm 
kind of like in the sounds, and now we can just mess around with you know, muting and bringing different parts. So. so I think we want to start with the pad. Maybe we start something like that. One. Oh, and actually, we, let's start the up slower. the tempo of the arm. push the offset up yeah I think that'll do us hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something we'll leave it there